I guess I really want people to shop local, and this is one of my favorite local shops. It's within walking distance of my house. It's Mockingbird Manor. It's actually right across the street from where my husband used to have his office, and I love this place. This is different from some of the antique stores that we have visited in the past. It's a combination of both antiques and new stuff. It's called Mockingbird Manor. It's been here for probably 20 years. It's definitely my sister's favorite place to shop when she comes here. All sorts of different things. And it's really, it's kind of broken up into rooms because this has been a re, a rethought out retail space. So some of these used to be duplexes. I'm gonna take you into a back, a back building that used to be duplexes. So it's really quirky and fun. The staging is beautiful. Now when I come here, I shop as much for ideas as I do for merchandise. Today I'm shopping for some gifts, but I get so many great ideas, you guys, when I come here. And actually the four paintings that are in my bedroom, um, Stuart, let's insert a picture of those here. I got at Mockingbird Manor. So I've gotten a number of things for my own home here in addition to jewelry and other stuff. So let's go in. And by the way, if you guys are coming to Oklahoma City or you're here local, you don't wanna miss this place. It is just really incredible. So let's go in. Well, this, when you come in, this is just a taste of what's to come. This whole front area, it's got a brick floor. It's staged just beautifully. Obviously, it's been decorated for Christmas, but in uh, non-traditional Christmas colors. So if you're looking for um, interior design ideas or Christmas ideas and color palettes to use, this is just absolutely beautiful. And I really wish you guys could smell it. They've got wonderful, those nest candles here that smell unbelievable. I may have to put that on a Christmas list for myself this year, but this whole area is just beautifully, beautifully done. Lots of white, turquoises, green, punctuations of black, and there's great stocking stuffer ideas. There's, um, oh, lots of blue and white here. So if you're one of those that is a real aficionado of blue and white, definitely you will want to examine each individual room here because it's really, really charming. Look at this Christmas tree, all decorated in blue and white ornaments. So if that is your look, this is a spot you don't want to miss. Look at all of the different porcelain pieces and then really great artwork, artwork here. So if, if your objective is to hunt down some things for wall hangings, then definitely this is a place to get some very, very unique items. And each room is styled differently, has each room probably has a different vendor. And the, again, there's an infusion of new stuff with old things. So it's, it's eclectic, it's wonderful, and there's a great ideas, great ideas for not only gift shopping for others, but also gift shopping for yourself. Look at these lamps, aren't they incredible? Okay, Stuart, I wanna come over here. Look at this, I love, this is one of my favorite things here. Isn't this stocking darling? So this is, let me see, this is, I would call, is at a really, yeah, this is only $20, and I think this is absolutely a great bargain. I love these pom-poms on it. And if you're a knitter, wouldn't this be a great idea to take? This is even lined. I think that's adorable, and I would be very tempted if someone in my family's name began with a P, I would be very tempted to snatch this up. So this is Jan Janice? Janice. Janice, am I right? Janice has been here, you've worked here with Liz for? Well, I've been here since day one. Since day one, and you and I know this has been open 20? 18. 18 years, okay, I knew 18, it was about. Yeah, it was 18 in November. Okay, and like I say, you guys, I love this place because it is literally within walking distance of That's me. <laughs> so, and another great thing, look at this wonderful space of blue and white is your thing, but what I love, Janice, about what you guys do is it's always a fresh experience when you come because right. 
everything is constantly. Liz and I were Changing. talking about yeah. this. Every yeah. day we get something. Different. Every day it changes. It looks completely different. And you know, we have so many, we have different people, so different personalities. And yeah. It's a good mix. It really is a good mix. But again, like I say, I come in here often and every time I come in, it looks like a brand new place. Yeah, it's very, it's very tempting. <laughs> it is. It's, it's a dangerous location. Look at that fabulous mirror. I've got my eye on that fabulous mirror over there. And I, like I say, the artwork and its placement, you get great ideas for framing, for staging things, for creating different vignettes. Really wonderful. So I love this, I love this idea. This is one idea I'm stealing right here. And I wanna look, I'm gonna scooch over here, Stuart. I love anything that is bamboo or speaks to kind of like campaign furniture. And I love the way this tray is styled with these glasses. And I've actually got a set of glasses that I just bought myself like this that's got the same kind of cane work on it. And I am going to do this. I'm just going to put it on a mirrored, on a mirrored tray. And let's see, this whole set, set of six glasses is $90 but as a really special gift for, some, for someone that would be incredible. Ginger jars, look at these fabulous ginger dar jars. They, they come in different colors. And again, what I like about this place is they use, it's staged for Christmas, but in non-traditional colors. So whatever your color flavor is, your color palette is, there are ideas that you can steal from here. I just love coming in here. And this is all the front area. This face is Western. Great, great windows. And it also gives me ideas when I come here about how they have staged furniture and styling in front of their windows and how effective that is. And because they change things so often, I'm constantly getting new ideas. So another thing that always tickles me when I come in these kind of stores, look at this beautiful chandelier. I just love it. And this is identical or almost identical to the one that I've got in my dining room. So this tells me this is about the same vintage. Now mine doesn't have crystals hanging on it, but if I wanted to convert what I had and get a different look, I could hang crystals off of it. So I always get a kick when I see something that is of the same history and, his, and historical integrity of my home. When I see something like that, it gives me ideas on how they have used things and how I might refresh what I already have. Now let's go into this next room. So if these, this is a, another thing that I love about this place. Great things, they really know what trends are and so they really inject a lot of that into a lot of their spaces. So for example, these are not old, but they are, they're based on an old fashioned concept, these feather trees and glitter trees, but they have a lot of these here and these are at a really good price point. So I have seen these at a far, far more expensive price point at other locations. So that one is 35, this one is 25. And again, these are investment pieces that you'd have for a while. And then they've got them styled with some just different little bottle brush, brush trees. Now this one is just $8.95, but if you already have some that maybe or inexpensive that you got at a craft store or something, it would be easy to spray paint these, put some glitter on them and replicate these. And then you have this wonderful glittery little forest that brings sparkle, joy and light and airiness into your Christmas decor. And I really like that. Again, if you're into blue and white, this is, this is really, really wonderful. So this tickles me. I see something here. Um, and I'm sure if any of you know what this is or what the purpose of these were, please let me know. But this shows that it's an antique, $179. And I've got something very, very similar at home that I thrifted that looks almost identical to that that I got at at a thrift store for maybe $10. So that tells me also the value of maybe some things that I already have. So this is my question of the day. I have not, I have not forgotten about it. My question of the day is, 
when you shop at places like this, are you primarily shopping for merchandise for yourself, for interior styling? Are you shopping this time of year for gifts or, or gifts for yourself? Or are you shopping for ideas? Are you shopping for interesting novel ways to style your home both for the, both for the holidays and year round so that's my question of the day when you visit these kind of stores what is your objective another thing that they really concentrate on here that i love so much is really beautiful natural elements and natural decor so the, they've got an incredible collection of agates and stones uh, corals just again that kind of nature inspired garden inspired decor that i like so so much and my takeaway here if i had a beach home or if i had any kind of of home that was in a, maybe a tropical environment a really warm weather environment look at how beautiful these white coral pieces look against this color in this cabinet now this is an old cabinet and look at how they have painted the interior with kind of a semi-gloss coral color to accentuate and highlight these beautiful white corals what a great idea to steal and i would never have thought to put this color against this color of wood and just a brilliant a brilliant idea likewise Stuart, if you very carefully we're going to a lot of these spaces are kind of tight so we're trying to be very respectful of these areas and the shoppers that are here today but look at this cabinet they've painted this kind of scandinavian or french gray and as i said they've also got jewelry here some of it's new some of it's antique but really beautiful jewelry pieces. And over the years, I have purchased lots of jewelry here. And in, in every area, I love the way that there is this, this juxtaposition of really whimsical items like this and then kind of stayed items. Now here's another idea. Look here, okay, and this is, um, a great idea that anyone could replicate where they have one of these canisters and they have just filled it with Christmas ornaments and Christmas baubles. And you've seen this idea probably in magazines and such, but sometimes I'll see a great idea and I forget it. So this reinforces those kind of design tips and decor tips in my mind. I also love, there's lots of gourd vases and gourd inspired lamps and such here i love that Ooh, and i was in the other day Stuart, and i did not see this lamp here and i really like this lamp so just layers upon layers upon layers of staging and merchandise okay here look i and the the other important tip when you come in places like this I was talking about this with the owner the other day. You want to look up, you want to look mid and eye level, and you want to look down. And every time you revisit one of these spaces and you wander back into these rooms, you will see something different. Okay, these are really great botanical prints. And guess who has these in her basement right now? framed differently and in a way that isn't quite as dramatic as this. So here's another takeaway. Okay, I already have some of these that I bought for a song many, many years ago. And my takeaway for this is I could refresh and reimagine them by just framing them differently. So that's a good idea. Another idea I'd like to steal from locations like this is ways to reupholster furniture. So look at how beautifully this has been reupholstered. This old chair has been reupholstered in this highly textured blue fabric. Love this. This would be great in a powdered room, in a powder room, or a formal living room. They also have. Okay, these are really a great price point. You guys, look at these fabulous beads. So these are small aqua African beads. 
These would be great as jewelry, but they would also be beautiful just in a bowl or something as just a unique kind of biblo that sits around. I love the color of this, just love, love this. And I love the fact that they're African. So I wonder what area of Africa and a great old jewelry chest, really fun. There's just so much to, there's just so, so much to see. Okay, so I showed you the other day, I think, or maybe I haven't showed you yet, but I have a number of these little felt <laughs> Christmas ornaments that have been given to me. And as I've been going through a lot of my Christmas ornaments, I have gotten rid of a number of them. But these are really, really special. They remind me of a Christmas story that I used to read to my boys when they were little. And I think these are just darling. And if I had grandchildren, well, I may. One day I will, hopefully. So I may have to start adding to this collection. They're soft and fuzzy and they're really, really dear. And these would make great gifts if you wanted to start a collection for someone. These would make a really sweet housewarming gift. Would be really cute hanging on a stocking. And the way they've got assortments of their, their, so their chosen color palette and they've got all sorts of baubles like that brown and turquoise together. Isn't that just rich? Looks very elevated, very expensive. So coming out in here, this is just another room contiguous. Okay, here's a great idea. Look at how, this is a basic lamp, but look at how they've elevated it with this really mod 60s, 70s inspired lampshade. You could even paint a lampshade like this if you were more talented with a paintbrush than I. I think that's really fun. Look at this interesting lampshade. So whatever your decor style, whether it's traditional, whether it's um, contemporary, there is something for everyone in this store. There's also things for your garden, so over here. And by the way, Stuart, your mom wants to come here and do some shopping. She told me that. So look at these. These are just wonderful. And they have four of these. So if you are looking for something really special to adorn a brick wall or posts in your garden, pillars, pilasters in your garden, this would be, this would be really fabulous. But again, look here, this is a wonderful Pendleton blanket. I love, love this. This is probably pretty pricey. 145 but that would be a great buy so they've got stuff even that's southwest inspired some more fabulous lamps over here i really highly encourage you guys if you come to oklahoma city you really need to come to this shop the other thing that i do here a lot is i might come in and spy some things that i like and typically after Christmas, they have a great after Christmas sale. So sometimes I'll come in and if whatever I wanted is still here, I'll look to see if, it's, if the price has been reduced. I also make my own Christmas gift list of things that I might want from here and I can give it to hubs or my kids. And the nice thing is we're shopping local and it's just right around the corner from me. Well, there is old and new everywhere, just like this wonderful, nostalgic Merry Christmas banner. I loved this. This is an area from Whitney English, who I think is kind of a local businesswoman here. Really great stuff, great earrings, great styling. If you collect brown transfer wear, there's brown transfer wear there. Stuart, if you would peek into that other room right there, if you are into lots of antique and old Christmas things, my goodness, you will go crazy in that room. All sorts of wonderful things. Um, this has lots of new things. There's more candles. Um, how about this? Is this not just great? I love this. If I had a, for a kid's room, this would be absolutely darling. And if you look over into that room, Stuart, you can see, look at the, look at the giraffe 
and the zebra mounted soft heads for a kid's room along with all of those Christmas decorations and everything. Very, very fun. If you wanted to deck out a Christmas tree in pom-poms, you could do this. That is just a very, very fun thing. If you know how to make pom-poms, then that would be a great idea for you to replicate. And Stuart, I see something right here. You can tell Jamie, I love this bag. I love this bag and it's not at a bad price. Now, when I come into places like this that have antiques and, and such. I know some people are bargainers and some people aren't. I typically never bargain in places that are close to my home because they're local shops that I really, really want to support. Obviously, they probably don't bargain on new merchandise, but typically I am, I am happy to pay full price because I know that I am contributing to a local, to my community and to a local business. So this has all sorts of fun stuff personal little things. I think this is darling. Look at this old bag. So also if you are into vintage clothing, if you're into vintage gloves and headwear, then you can also find that kind of stuff here. And Stuart, if you very gingerly step in here, you see what I mean. And because this was a home, like they have things hanging in the closet. Really great. It's, it's so fun to get just a huge jolt of nostalgia when you come here. And we can do just kind of a brief, we won't spend a lot of time in this room, but you can get just a brief glimpse of all of the different kinds of things that they have here. There's just so much stuff. And by the way, this place also has a downstairs and it has two up door, upstairs locations here. And then there's even a second building. I think I told you that I was really kind of a little bit fascinated with these tinsel trees. I know they're popular right now, but look at this one. It's in this plum color. And that is one of the colors that I use in my office upstairs. And this is just $22. And I would have this every year. And it might make working in my office a little bit more fun. Stuart, what do you think? Do I need this? Okay, this shall be mine. I may or may not decorate it, but look at that up close. Because really, doesn't everybody need a purple Christmas tree? So we've come upstairs now and there's different types of items up here. There's lots of silver plate and brass, lots of candlesticks. If you wanted to do a whole congregation of candlesticks, love those candelabras that would speak to a lot of different types of interior decor styles and then come around in here Stuart because this is this is interesting one of the like I say one of the things that I always look for when I come here or at least this time when I'm looking at are things like mirrors I'm looking at lamps and light fixtures and there's just a whole different assortment of stuff up here we've got more pastel colors pastel trees they also typically have Really great pillows here, I have noticed. And these are all, typically most of them are down filled and the kind of pillows that I like that are real squishy. This is an absolutely incredible trough, wooden trough here. And as I said, I'm kind of really into these little trees and I think these are absolutely adorable, aren't they, Stuart? This would be cute on a bar or something. I think these are really, really dear and very nostalgic. So if you want just a real infusion of nostalgia in your life, then you guys want to come to Mockingbird Manor because it's really, really fun. So we'll kind of wrap this up today, this first round, and then in the next round, I'll show you some more great ideas and some things that I might be bringing home with me. 
so here is my outfit for today my shopping local shopping about Western Avenue just about a block from where I live my sunglasses are from Target my earrings are one of my favorites for the season these are part of that Atrios line of tiled jewelry tiled inspired we'll try to put a link love these these are part of my my Christmas gift list recommendations um, my blouse is just a sleeveless white blouse I think it's J. Crew. This is definitely J. Crew, and this is thrifted, you guys. I love these kind of these jackets that are kind of scrunched up and intentionally kind of wrinkled. I love this because it's light and it's perfect for the weather today, which is simply way too warm. I think it's it's got to be around 70, don't you think, Stuart? So a light jacket like this is good. Um, my necklace is from Madewell. It's a Lariat necklace. Um, I've just got an assemblage of bracelets, some of which belong to my mother-in-law, others just a smorgasbord of bracelets. Um, my belt came from Nordstrom Rack. My britches are from H&M, high-waisted jeans, and let's see, my booties. I can't really remember where these booties are from. I've had them for many, many years, black booties. So did I forget anything, Stuart? I don't think so, but like I say, this was thrifted from Goodwill, so I've got, got a great deal on it. So there you go, there's my outfit du jour. It's that liminal time between Thanksgiving and December 1st when for me when all the the holiday activity Christmasizing and all of that begins December 1st so I like having this little bit of a cushion with a few days left in November to kind of reset um, and refresh my mindset going into the holidays and kind of get things cleaned up. So I still have, I actually still have out since it's still November, some of my Thanksgiving decorations and I'll leave them out for a day or two more before all the pumpkins and gourds and everything give way to the holiday decorations. So here's my question of the day for you. I know a lot of people overlap now, their Thanksgiving and their Christmas, but if you are somebody who keeps them separate like I do, you've got your Thanksgiving and then you've got your holidays, Stuart's laughing at me, um, do you immediately put up your Christmas stuff or do you kind of give yourself a little bit of a chance to reboot? before you start putting up your holiday decorations. Well, for me, I like it because I can use these days to go through what holiday decor I have, get my outside wreaths up, do that kind of thing, and then hit the ground running. Now, this year I am really, I wouldn't say I'm downsizing so much as I just am curating. I want to get rid of stuff that no longer appeals to me. It might still have value and appeal to somebody else, but I want to just reduce because increasingly I like things to be simpler and what decor I have, I also like to be more natural. So I have probably eight of these tubs down in my basement. I'm gonna bring them up. I've brought up, actually Stuart helped me. I've brought up a few of them and Stuart's laughing because we were getting up and down my 1935 tight, tight steps and with no, no limbs injured. Um, <laughs> We, we did laugh at each other a little bit, but I'm going to go through these and I'm going to decide what I want to keep or not. Now, this is a Christmas card holder. I recognize it. And for years, I used to have it hanging in a certain place, actually in my laundry room. And as I got Christmas cards in, I would stick them in here. Well, you know what? Hardly anybody sells Christmas card or sends Christmas card gifts anymore. So I'm going to take off the little bell and I'm going to save it because I can never have too many bells. Well, I say I'm gonna do that easily and I can't, but I'm gonna relegate this to either the giveaway or whatever. It, it's, going to be, it's going to be outsourced. Now I have, typically when I do my Christmas, I'll have like a gold Christmas or a silver Christmas or whatever, but I, I seldom overlap too much. So I've got some things that I put in my gold Christmas category and I love mixing these gold toned, these are really heavy you guys, these gold toned uh, pine cones with real pine cones. So these are going to be keepers and I love the way they look with brass. 
and I'll show you guys how I style these things uh, as I unpack them. Like I love this little guy. Sometimes this little guy hangs on a stocking, but it's just sweet. It's another brass or gold tone pine cone. So I'm going to keep those over there because I know I want to keep those. Okay, these are, I know these are also keepers because these are my stocking holders. So, so Stuart here, can you feel, can you feel with the other hand? So they're pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. So you just put these on your mantle like this. I'm probably not telling you guys anything you don't already know, but you put them on your mantle like that and then you just hang your stockings off of it and you don't have to, like in this case, this is a stone uh, stone mantle piece and there's no way to get a nail in it or anything. So I can just put these on and then hang my stockings off of them. So these are, these are functional, these are keepers. Oh, and by the way, they're, they're felt on the bottom and so they won't, cra they won't scratch the, my wooden mantle piece in the living room. So those are going to be keepers. In fact, this, most of this that's in here will probably be keepers because these are some of my traditional things. Okay, I love these twall stockings. These are my stockings. I've got four of them. Oh, see, there's another one of those hanging little pine cones. And these are what go on my mantle in the living room. And I will keep them. Now, these aren't these are, these are the pretty stockings. These are the faux stockings that are strictly for staging. And these are filled with cotton batting. So that way they're filled out to perfection all of the time. And then I usually tuck in greenery, maybe one special stocking stuffer in these. And, but these are more for styling. And I love these. And I've had these for years. I think I got these at Williams-Sonoma originally, many, many years ago. So these are going to be keepers. And I'll show you how I style them because I typically wrap little packages and things and put them in there and they're they're kind of they're kind of fun. Then I just have a hodgepodge. <laughs> okay, my friend Jenny, the bead buyer from Hobby Lobby, she buys me these little felt <laughs> ornaments that I just think are hysterical. They actually remind me of my sister Meg. So I usually have these, and these are, I don't know if they'll hang on the tree this year. I don't know what will happen to those. And then I have some, I have a whole assemblage of wooden creatures that are, that look, characters, I guess, that look very kind of German to me. And I have a number of these, and I typically, it would be the equivalent, I guess, of my little village, though my village is much smaller, and there are all these wooden people. And a lot of times I'll have this in my kitchen windowsill or something, but they're all wood, and they all look kind of old, and they all kind of tell a story. So I've got a few like those. And I, I will, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do with those this year. But I, these are all keepers. So I shouldn't maybe go through these too much. Here's some more pine cones that I'll keep. Um, here's some more little wooden guys, wooden horses that go with my, my, wooden, my little wooden theater stage set that I have. Um, I got this in Santa Fe, this terracotta Santa. And it's actually a bell. And I got this in Santa Fe years ago. So I will keep that. And that will go someplace. And then, okay, so here are some other things that I may not be keeping. Okay, I used to have more of, oh, maybe almost like a Victorian look in some of my Christmas stuff. And I've grown kind of tired of that. Again, every, lots of my ornaments and things are nature inspired. So I have some things that are kind of more Victorian. I've had them for years. So because I've had them for a long time, it's hard to get, you know, it may be hard to get rid of them. But nevertheless, I, I think this, he may have to go. A little creepy. Hey, he's, <laughs> He is, he is a little, he is a little creepy. I, I admit that. He is a little creepy. I used to have him, <laughs> those are fighting words, Stuart. 
<laughs> but I used to have him, he always used to hang on a pole, one of my floor lamps like this, and I thought it was so clever and so cute. But I, I don't know, I think he's gonna have to go. So I, I'm sorry, Santa, but you're in, the, you're in the gotta go pile, I think. Oh, this is a, just a sweet little porcelain ceramic statue that has lots of detail to it. And I, I got that as a gift from someone. Um, okay, this is, this is a cheap, but one of my very favorite things that I do every year, I'll show you. And this is just one of those cheap Santa hats that I've attached some bells to. But what I like to do is hang it from the corner of some of my really serious portraits or things, hang it like this, tuck in some greeneries, and I, I kind of like that. So this is a keeper, Stuart. Um, okay, here's another one of those Santas that is, I don't know if he's creepy or not, but I think he's, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just not, in, I'm just not into these kind of things right now. So this may be one I ask you guys, thumbs up or thumbs down. Shall I stay or shall I go? I guess this just isn't my kind of decor so much anymore. I'm, I'm just, I'm just not that fancy anymore. So what do you think, Stuart? Stay or go? Mm, mm. He, he, not as creepy. Not as creepy. You can swing both ways. I, I, I don't know. I think this one might go or might stay. We'll put him in the undecided pile. Uh, you guys let me know what you think. Okay, now these are some of my nearest, dearest things because these are um, handiwork. And these are my kit. This is like, this is one of my, my boy's real stockings. So I needle pointed this many, many years ago for my son, Johnny. And this is what he gets all of his stocking stuffers in. So this is the one that will travel with us when we go to, to Colorado or if we go out of town for Christmas. And I put those little bells on it. And I, I started this when he was a baby and I actually finished it when I was pregnant with my, my second son, Jamie, when I, actually I got sick during my second, second pregnancy and I was in the hospital and I remember finishing this while I was in the hospital. So this one is very near and dear to me. That is handmade um, needlepoint, as is this sweet pillow. And this was a gift from a friend of mine, as was this little cat. This is also hand needlepointed from a friend of mine. I love those. And then this is from my, my very best friend, Dee Dee. She did this for me, and this is a, a kind of a gardening Santa. So I love this. These, these kind of things are very near and dear to me and very traditional. And then here is a needlepoint stocking that someone did for me. So it kind of matches that other needlepoint. And this is my stocking every year. This is what I get my stocking stuffer treats in. Guess who's the, who this belongs to, Stuart? Goose. Goose. This is, this is Goose's stocking. Now this doesn't match the other ones, but, but it is very fun. And, and it came from my sister-in-law who got it, I can't remember, on one of her overseas trips. And this is Jamer's stocking. And he loves this. And this is what he gets his real stocking stuffers in. That one's kind of fun, isn't it? It is, it's very Jamer. And then actually, Dad doesn't really have a stocking. He and I kind of share a stocking. So, um, so that's just the way it is. And then I've got, it looks like in here, I've got some towels. So I haven't done very good at getting rid of too much stuff out of this one, Stuart. But I'll show you guys where I hang up all of these things. So do you guys do this? Do you go through um, your, your Christmas decorations beforehand? and decide what you're going to keep and what you're going to get rid of or what you're going to use this year and not use this year and if you don't use it this year do you just keep it in storage or do you give it away to somebody or give it away to your kids or what this is very dear this is an advent hanger and this was made by a friend of mine who passed fairly recently and you um unknot as each day goes by during advent you unknot one of the little bows there it's just made of felt and then typically it's got a bell on the end and then i put something decorative at the at the top so that is also a keeper 
Um, oh, here are some of my favorite decorations. I love these. And these don't necessarily always go on the tree. You guys are probably appalled at my storage. I love all of these little knit and woven things. I think these are so, so dear. And one of these days, if I have grandchildren, these little knit things will be on a Stuart laugh. Isn't that cute though, Stuart? That little, that little ski sweater. I think these are just so dear. Really, really cute. I love these. Obviously, I like the things that are soft and, and kind of squishy and comfy. Um, and then there's just a few bell down, jingle bell down. I've got a little Christmas. This was a gift from somebody. So I'll probably keep this. So that, I, I didn't get rid of very much stuff in there, Stuart. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe I'd already gotten rid of some of the stuff that was in there. Okay, this is more big stuff. Okay, here is a candy box that I saved just because it was a fun box. But I think I'm going to give that away. These are fun trees because I think they look so real. So these I'm going to keep. And I always typically decorate these as if they were real. So I may put them in pots. I don't know that I'll have the cardinal on it or not. But tell me if you guys like these. These are made out of plastic. I seldom buy anything plastic anymore, but these I do keep because, I, again, I think they look so real. And I can have these on a mantle and they won't dry out because that's a problem that we have with any kind of live greenery here, whether we use it inside or outside. The greenery dries so, so quickly that it is dead and done long before the big day arrives. So that's always problematic. I've had these on the bar before. I've had them in different places, but I think those are kind of cute, don't you, Stuart? So I think I'll keep those. And, oh, I'm seeing something I think I'm gonna get rid of. There's a, an, another buddy. So I've got some fake garland. And I used to put this and wind it around the uh, the steps, the banner on my steps, I just, I'm just not into fake greenery too much anymore. So I think I've had this for years and years. I don't really like to use fake greenery on my mantle. I know a lot of you have to because you're allergic and I certainly understand that. But for some reason, this just doesn't speak to me anymore. And I don't know, I may give this away. It was not inexpensive. I just think somebody else could put it to better use. What'd you say, Stuart? Um, I just think somebody else could put it to better use and it takes up a lot of storage space. So I think this, this might need to be donated to somebody who can put it to better use. Uh, that's another question I guess I have. Do you guys use real greenery or faux greenery? And this even has some seeded eucalyptus faux greenery in it. So I, I don't know. I think, I think this may have to, this may have to go because I'm more about natural things in the house now. It's easier to take down and it doesn't get so dusty. So there's my bin number two. Stuart, do we have a t any time for bin number three? We have already run out of time, you guys. So see, this is why you do it in that period between Thanksgiving and Christmas when you can go through more of your stuff. If you guys have any ideas on where I should put some of these things that you've just seen in my house, then let me know and I might take you up on it. So there you go. I've got three more tubs to go through. And hopefully I'll have at least, I will at least have reduced uh, my storage capacity by about a tub's worth of Christmas stuff from going through these tubs that I brought up today. So you guys let me know how it, it's going at your house as you get ready to festivize for the holiday season. See you later. Well, today it's all about being a Christmas elf. So I have on one of my favorite aprons that you've seen before. I adore these. These are from World Market and I can't remember. I think they're only like $20 or something. I'll try to put a link because they would make a great Christmas gift. 
I think they're really kind of stylish in an artisanal kind of way. Don't you, Stuart? I really like them. So I've got this one in gold. I've got another one in kind of gray. Um, and then after that, it's just all about paying my dues. I've just got workout clothes underneath this. Doesn't really matter what they are. I've got a pair of Land's End leggings, just a Nike top, and my Puma tennis shoes because I have to pay the piper and work out after I shoot this video. And so there you go. My outfit as it is today. I just put together this wonderful centerpiece. It's going to be the third variety of amaryllis compositions that I have put together for you guys. And I want you to let me know of these free different Brex amaryllis bulbs um, arrangements. Which one is your favorite? So that's my question of the day. And hang on to the end because I'll show you how to put this one together. Well, I have grown and gifted, I, I think, hundreds of amaryllis bulbs over the year. This year, I'm partnering with Brex, and I ordered I don't know how many to give as gifts. And I have three really fun ideas for you guys. I'm so excited about it, and I can't tell you how much fun I had playing with these, these little stories that I'm kind of putting together using Brex bulbs and some of the things that I've ordered from them. So this inspiration came from this climbing Santa. I think he is so cute. Now Santa can climb. You can get an angel that climbs or an elf that climbs. And what it does, it's twofold. It's obviously darling, but it also serves as a support for your amaryllis bulb. Now you can get whatever, you know, whatever color you want. Um, you can get the standard red or you can get some bicolored. But for me, what's important about this is that it is going to to get children excited about gardening. And I've, I have two new daughter-in-laws and I'm starting to think about great gift ideas and great fun projects to do with, with future grandchildren, hopefully, and this is one of them. So I, I just kind of went bonkers with this. So I got a bulb that's potted up and children will just thrill at seeing its progress because once it starts, it will grow as much as an inch a day, depending on conditions. So this one I believe is just a solid red one and I have put in place this charming little ladder. Now when you get it, you can get it as a set from Brex and I got the climbing Santa. So Santa can climb on whatever level you choose. He's got these sweet little hooked hands and he can climb along with the ladder. And it might be a fun thing to do to let the kiddos do that Santa progresses up the ladder as not only the amaryllis grows, but as uh, Christmas gets a little bit closer too. So in this little storybook that I've put together with the, the ladder and the Santa as a foundation, how fun would it be for a child to style this during the holidays. So with the ladder in place and Santa, I came up with this whole thematic of Santa hanging Christmas lights on this little ladder. And I got some of these tiny little fairy lights that you can get really inexpensively. And you can see I've got some around the perimeter and I thought it would kind of, kind of the kids could pretend like they were hanging the lights around the edge and use little wooden toothpicks that they could decorate themselves. You can sometimes buy them already decorated. I've got one here, a prized possession of mine when my children were in kindergarten and yours may be too, they made these little, um, these little clothespin reindeers and clothespin characters. So that can secure the lights around the edge. And then Santa is being very, very careful as he strings the lights and hangs the wreath on top of this darling ladder that you can get at Brex. Now, Santa is my chosen character, but if you chose an elf or you choose an angel, then obviously your little playthings around um, creating your story might be different, but it would be so fun for a child to style this and let their imagination go wild, all with the amaryllis bulb as a foundation, watching it grow. And this is one of those kinds of things that will continue not only throughout the holiday seasons, but season, but maybe into January. So this is all you'll need. You'll need an amaryllis bulb. You can get 
uh, one of many, many varieties at Brex. They come packed in this, planted in this seltzer. You can get the ladder and the little character plus any little toys or ornaments or little um, Christmas decorations that you choose to decorate around your amaryllis. And then obviously you're gonna need some of these little fairy lights. So it doesn't take much to create a whole theme and create your own really magical story. So get your kids involved early on, get them started out in the way they should grow as being good gardeners with an amaryllis for the holidays. So that's my style number one of holiday amaryllis gifting. Let's look at my next arrangement. Well, this gift idea reminds me of my friend Mo, who every year all of her Christmas decorating was in, in very simple, beautiful red and white. So for her, I have selected the Amaryllis Magical Touch. It is has red blooms with white edges. And what I'm gonna do is just give her a now and later kind of gift. So she is a good gardener. She knows how to pot up her own Amaryllis in whatever her container of choice is. She'll have this to look forward to in January. So I'm gonna tuck this sweet bulb inside this muslin bag that is hanging on a little basket, that's the now, and the amaryllis bulb will be the later, and I've put my own little gift card on it. These are some winter berries, and then I've decorated it with just a couple of little felt characters and a bottle brush tree. Now, in addition to the amaryllis bulb and the little winter berries, I tucked them all in one of my QVC baskets for a, a little special personal touch from me this year. And then I've put a planting guide in here and I've also put one of these really indispensable stakes that supports the amaryllis. You can get this from Brex too. And as it grows, it supports the really um, sometimes top heavy stalks with the flowers and also some of the foliage. So I'm tucking one of those in there as well. And to make it a little bit more all year practical, Practical. I've also put in a sweet little red and white detail of a tea towel, that tea towel that makes it that much more festive, I think. And then I've adorned it with some of her classic red and white stripe and red and white polka dot ribbon that she uses in all of her holiday decor. So I think this is really a cute idea. So again, what you need is any kind of basket. You're now plant, whether that's these winter berries, a little fern, almost anything. Whatever your amaryllis bulb is of choice, one of these stakes, stakes from Brex, I'm getting my words tumbled, stakes from Brex, a planting guide, and then just put it all together, dressed out and adorned in a really festive way. And there is your number two way to gift an amaryllis bulb from Brex. This may be the most dramatic centerpiece that you can put together in five minutes or less, probably even three minutes or less. Now, the inspiration for this was twofold. One, I wanted obviously the amaryllis to be the star of the show and something that would endure through the holidays and after. But also it was inspired by the fact that for many, many years, I spent Christmas by myself. When I was a student, when I was a graduate student, my family lived far away and it was just kind of a lonely time. Well, if you know a student or someone who might, might be housebound or infirmed or for whatever reason, they can't find it easy to decorate, then I would suggest putting together this tableau. Now, all you'll need is some kind of container. Now, in my case, I used a footed basket. This one I happened to get at a thrift store, but you could use any kind of footed vase, a cake stand. For that matter, you could just use a plate. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or expensive. So first of all, you're going to need a container. Then I just went to my grocery store and they had live wreaths. So I got one of their live wreaths. I soaked it for about 20 minutes in my bathtub let it dry, and then all I did was center it 
over the basket and it was the perfect circumference for this container and would be the perfect circumference for practically any standard size plate. So that gave me all of the greenery. So what I love is that the components of this are kind of like Christmas decorating in one container. So you could, you could take it apart, you could take all of the fruit and put it in a separate bowl and that would encourage those graduate students or those college students students to eat healthy. Plus, I think fruit is just inherently beautiful. Put them in a bowl with the pine cones, which is another uh, there for the taking kind of free gift from Mother Nature, which would make a beautiful arrangement. They could take the wreath off, hang it on their door, and then they have this beautiful amaryllis to enjoy throughout the holidays. Now they can enjoy it, can enjoy it all together like this as a centerpiece for their table, or they can deconstruct it and use it throughout their apartment or their room. Now the added touch that makes it really, really magical, you guys, are the these little fairy lights. I buy these in quantity around the holidays and they're battery operated and I just tuck them in wherever they need to be for just a little bit of, of oh extra sparkle, extra magic when they're finished. They can hang them on their bulletin board. They can um, weave them around a frame or anything. But I think that this Christmas in a basket is just a really wonderful way to gift the queen of what I think, uh, the queen of Christmas, which are these gorgeous amaryllis bulbs. This one is um, already potted up and about in bloom. But if you didn't want to pot one up, if you didn't even want to go to that much trouble, then Brex also has these no water waxed flowers in the wax casing. And I look, this one is already erupting with two big stalks. So you could just put that in the center and then they could enjoy watching it grow. And talk about minimal, that is, like I say, five or three minutes or less. All you'll need is the container a wreath. It can be faux or real. I like the real ones. Grab yourself some pine cones, get some fruit of your choice, and then place the amaryllis, amaryllis bulb in the center. And by the way, this also has one of those stakes that comes from Brex to support the amaryllis stalks as they grow. So there you go. A really, really dramatic centerpiece. Compliments of me and Brex. And I hope you guys will check out their, ca their catalog I just got mine and they still have really great availability on different things. So if you still are in need of some holiday gifts for really before or after the holidays, I like to pot some up so I'll have them for Valentine's Day and kind of fill that gloomy void right after Christmas when you take the tree down, then by all means you might want to order some amaryllis from Brex. And I hope that you will let me know if you try one of these arrangements for someone in your life. Well, here you go. Here's your outfit of the day. My bobbly earrings, very festive for the season, I think. I got it Ponderosa Boutique at a pop-up shop a while back. My sweater is from Shein. I have had it for several years and I bring it out every Christmas because it's just such a wonderful green color. My white t-shirt is one of the Amazon Essentials. I just buy them online from Amazon. My jeans are freshly cut off and fringed Land's End jeans that I've had forever and my boots. One of my very favorite things are Mary boots. And lastly, and this is one of the things on my Christmas list, you guys might want to check it out. This is the pear necklace uh, designed by Janet Mavic and it's on Orchard Jewelry. So there you go. There's my outfit of the day. Dog, I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing about my son, Johnny. That is finally home for the holidays. When did you got into LA when? Uh, got in at about 7 p.m. on Saturday night. Yeah, and then he flew from LA, got rid of some jet lag. He spent the night there and then he came to Oklahoma City yesterday. So if he looks a little sleepy, he's probably jet lagging. But what is one of my Christmas presents you're giving me? <laughs> I forgot. What am I getting? Oh, the video. That I would do a video with her. <laughs> because he is like Stuart, my husband, my other son. They don't particularly like to be on camera. No.
but I wanted to show him off. And because I also told him if he would be on camera with me, we would make our very favorite chicken chili rice soup. So it's a good deal. It, yeah, it's a pretty good trade off. So how many years have we been making this? Uh, since as long as I can remember. Yes. I mean, for a very long time. And it was funny when my other son FaceTimed us last night. What was he doing? He was making the exact same thing <laughs> in Colorado. Same, yeah, in Colorado. So anyhow, this is basically a little bit of its history. And this is what all goes into it. And Johnny was my sous chef yesterday. And he actually did some pre-prep. You chop some onions. What else did you do? Mm, mm -hmm. Debone the chicken. Debone the chicken. Anyhow, he did some uh, mise en place kind of prep for me. So here is the recipe. And this is a real meaningful recipe to me. It came from my friend Patty Mullins years and years and years ago. We've made it a hundred times since. It's, it's one of my men's family favorites. It was one of my mother-in-law's favorite things. And the nice thing about it is it's so forgiving. You can do so many different things to personalize it. So we're going to make this. Historically, we have made it like for Halloween, maybe Christmas Eve. As soon as fall starts and it gets cold, we start making the yeah, yeah. chili rice soup. Yeah. And this was what? The first thing you requested when I asked you what kind of food you wanted to have on the yeah, weekend. It's very nice comfort food. Yeah. It's great comfort food, especially if you if when you're coming from Singapore where it's not even cold. So he is happy to have the cold temperatures and warm food cooking on the stove. So Stuart, if you would type this out so people kind of know what is in this recipe. So like I say, we started this yesterday. So let me kind of go through step by step. It could not be easier. It's great to make for a crowd. It's great to make and just have on the stove. And then something we botters really like are, are like all of the added stuff. Let's you say. can melt a lot of cheese on top of it. <laughs> a lot of cheese. And what else? Anything. What else? Anything that has cream in it, lots of cheese, lots of chilies, and lots of spice is good for us. Is, is I think, probably part of our, our vodder household tradition for the holidays. So yeah, we're, we're not experienced with working in the kitchen, are we? Like, like I say, it's a pretend, pretend cooking show. So, okay, yesterday, now in the recipe, it says to, that you want a cup of chopped chicken. So here's kind of how I do it. Like I say, be really, really arbitrary with the amounts of your ingredients and how you do it. You could obviously, for step one, you could cook just some chicken breasts. How do you, how do you and Delphia make it at home when you make it? Do you just do chicken breasts or chicken thighs or? Uh, whatever we feel when we go to the grocery store. Yeah, so because it's, like I say, you don't have to be too, careful or too exacting about what you use. But here's typically how I do it. So because we eat a lot of it and one big pot doesn't last very long, I typically get for step one, I just get a whole organic chicken. And so step one would be get a whole organic chicken, just put it on the stove with lots of salted water. And here is my secret ingredient. Johnny, this is new this year. I don't think you know about this. Typically when we put green chilies in it, it's never quite hot enough. And so we always add jalapeno peppers and you usually add even more peppers at the end, don't you? To make I it. like it spicy. Yeah, I like it spicy. So, so what I did this year, and this is how it's garden related. Now this looks kind of disgusting, you guys, but this year at the end of the season, and since it was a really long growing season, in fact, the day you arrived was the first freeze we've had this year. So I roasted lots of the jalapeno peppers and poblano peppers and whatever came from my garden. I roasted some cherry tomatoes and things that came from the garden. And then I pulverized them with um, just my Cuisinart. Then I made, and you can't tell anymore, but these were, I scooped them out with a, an ice cream scoop and then I froze the individual scoops on a cooking sheet in the freezer. And then I took the individual frozen balls and I put them into the freezer in little baggies. That way, Stuart, was it you, Stuart, that called them a flavor bomb? A flavor bomb. And you can just take one of those 
garden fresh or garden frozen flavor bombs and you can toss them into whatever you want to toss them into. So yesterday when I cooked the whole chicken, I dumped one of these flavor bombs in there. Then I, after the chicken was cooked, this would be step two, I screened out any fat and skin and that kind of stuff, Johnny. I screened that off and then I poured it and I reduced it. I cooked it on high for a while and I reduced it down so it was really flavorful. Put it in the refrigerator and then you can see more of the fat collected at the top and the sediment collects at the bottom and then I will just scrape off both of you of the, both of those things and use this as some of the chicken stock that it calls for because it's really flavored with all of that garden stuff. Johnny, did tell the truth now. Did you help me very much in the garden when you were growing up? Uh, I made her who she is today. <laughs> I, I don't know about that, but they, uh, they were very indulgent and very patient with me being out in the garden as much as I was inside mothering you. I carried a lot of manure. <laughs> Yes, he did. That was before I got into gravel and he would have carried lots of bags of gravel, but you may be doing some of that this weekend. So that may be another Christmas gift. Okay, so that would be then, was I on step two, Stuart? Step two, step two was then you just collect your stock. And then I cooled the chicken and then I did a handoff to Johnny. And Johnny, who is very meticulous about things. He got all of the bones out. He took all of the skin off any of any of that kind of stuff so that I have just, I, I really have two or three cups here of really good, soft, full flavor chicken because my guys always like more chicken in it than just what the recipe calls for. And you can always double up the batch because it tastes just as good the second day, doesn't it? Many a time, Johnny will tell you that I'll make something for dinner and then you'll do what? We'll also have it for breakfast. <laughs> for breakfast the next morning. So I always make a lot of this. So then for step three, once this is cooked and cooled, and, you, and what I love about this recipe is you can just do it all the day before, keep it in the refrigerator, and then we can assemble it later. So Johnny, we're gonna do two tablespoons of butter now, if you don't want to use butter, you guys, and always use a really large pot. If you don't want to use butter, Johnny, I'm going to let you, do we have a scoop here? I love these scoops that you can get from, I got this at Target or someplace like that, but they work kind of like a, also a, a pastry scraper. So Johnny, if you will put the onions in here, we'll melt some butter. Now I'm going to have to light my fire. Okay, I do have a gas stove, you guys. So we're gonna melt this. And then Johnny will just go ahead and put the onions in. Now, if you wanna use more onions, you can. Um, if you want to, I think the recipe calls for garlic and quite frankly, sometimes I'll put garlic in it. Sometimes I don't because for me, that's not as important as the other ingredients that make it more like Southwest um, and really uh, really more Mexican flavored, um, I think. And sometimes I cheat and I will put in, whew, boy, that is flavorful. Okay, so we got the garlic in there. And then from this point, you guys, it's just so easy. And FYI, I guess, here's my question of the day. Are you guys neat cooks or are you messy cooks? And I am kind of a messy, I'm a messy cook, I admit it. And I kind of have gotten out of practice because my boys aren't home anymore. So I am going to take the fat off of my homemade stock. Another kind of yucky looking thing. I don't know, Stuart, you think it looks pretty good, huh? I know what it's gonna be. Okay, you, yeah, <laughs> have you, Stuart, have you had this before? Well, I, I know it. Yeah, I, 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 I think we made it at Halloween once and you were here. And, and Johnny doesn't get too jealous because he knows that Stuart, I cook for Stuart. 
pretty I much may, in your absence. I maybe get a little bit jealous. <laughs> you maybe get a little bit jealous. Well, okay. You can't say I didn't do it for you when you were at home. So Johnny just got married. Um, Johnny, tell people, just put up with your mother, tell people why you're in Singapore, because a lot of people ask. Uh, well, I'm in Singapore mostly because of my wife. She's Singaporean and works there. Um, and now I also work in Singapore. So his wife uh, went to Harvard and Harvard Law and works. She, she's a civil servant. Civil servant for the Ministry of Singapore. And Johnny works for? A South Asian Institute. And what exactly is your capacity there? Uh, well, I write different papers on politics and international relations and I uh, am on the publication team so I edit a lot of other people's work. And Johnny has always been interested in international affairs and he speaks. Remember when you were trying to decide between Hindi and Russian when you were in college to, yeah. to study Hindi or Russian? I was always interested in other parts of the world and foreign languages so I chose Hindi over Russian just because I thought Russia would be a bit too cold to go and visit. <laughs> and then he, you live for on and off how many years in India? Uh, probably spent about maybe three, three and a half years in total. Oh. Uh, I'm in India at different port, uh, parts of my life. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so right now, you guys, I am just adding stock. Now, the recipe only calls for two cups, and you can see I'm being a lot more liberal because I make a huge batch of this. So I added my own homemade stock, and now I am adding some organic chicken stock. And like I say, I'm not being very exacting at all. I'm just adding pretty much as much as I want. Oh, your brother is calling in right now. I can tell on my phone that he's trying to FaceTime us. Um, okay, so for this step then, I've added the stock and now I'm adding the chopped chicken. Now the recipe, you guys, calls for milk. It calls for a cup of milk. I practically never add milk because milk we drink almond milk around here, or as my boys used to call it growing up, mom and her goat milk. Um, I don't have dairy milk in my refrigerator typically, so I just add more stock. So again, you can just be really, really just arbitrary about whatever you want to put in. So I'm going to put that in. And then you add the rice. Now the rice is one of those things that I think is is... I don't know, you can add more or less depending on what your predilection is. If you really, if you wanna make it lower carb, then don't add as much rice or any rice. If you want it to be thicker and heartier, add more rice. So what's your preference, Johnny? Or do you really care? Uh, if you add more rice, it's a bit more filling. So yeah. I go for more rice. I go for more rice. Okay, so we're gonna add, that is that. It calls for half a cup of rice, I think, Johnny. Half a cup of raw rice, and it is raw rice, you guys, but I'm gonna put almost a cup in here. Now, that is going to cook uh, for approximately 20 minutes, and then we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Now, I, I had already sauteed the onions and everything. That takes about 10 minutes, and then this will take about 20 minutes. So we'll just stir this. Johnny, would you get the lid out of the drawer over there that goes with this pot. And I'm gonna monitor this, you guys, and I'll bring it to a boil, and then I'll turn it down to simmer. Now, you may notice that at this point, I really haven't added any flavorings or any spices or anything other than the natural flavoring that came from some of my flavor bombs. Now, what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to add a little bit more of this because, Johnny, I want all of this jalapeno flavor and everything to really infuse itself into the chicken. So I'm adding a little bit more of that. Johnny, you're impressed, aren't you? You're thinking, man, mom's <laughs> gone real highbrow adding these flavor bombs. You've, you've you? learned some new tricks since I've been away, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. So that is that step, and we're just going to let this come to a boil. 
and I will stir this periodically just to make sure that the rice is cooking and doesn't stick and to monitor if I need to add a little bit more chicken stock. And a lot of times, depending on how many I'm feeding or how hungry uh, my boys are or if Johnny and his friend Nikki is here. Is Nikki coming tonight? Uh, yeah, he should be in town tonight. So Nikki is one of Johnny's best high school friends, but he is a pilot for, is he with Southwest or United now? I think Southwest. Southwest. And he is in Santa Barbara right now, but he'll be flying in tonight. So he comes over. We, and sometimes, in fact, I've set the table for four tonight, Johnny, in case he comes. So if, since little Jamie won't be here, Nikki can fill in the gap. Okay, so I'm going to... Let's bring this to a boil and then we'll come back and we'll add the rest of the ingredients. So this has been cooking on a slow simmer for about 20 minutes. Johnny, are we prepared with the rest of the ingredients to put in? We're all set. Do you okay. want me to put in the cream? Well, let me see here first. Let's... One of the things about this, so it's got... Um, Salt, cayenne, and cumin to taste. And a lot of this, I'll put in a little bit, and then you guys typically, they will add more cayenne or whatever when they flavor their bowls, because everybody likes it a little bit different. It's also really good with Tabasco sauce. <laughs> yes, my boys say I never have enough Tabasco sauce here. So I'm gonna put in, I like a little bit more cumin, but this says, how much does that say cumin? It just says to taste. So I put in, about that much. Like I say, I'm not very exacting. And then I like to add a little bit of coriander too. Johnny, did we remember to get some fresh cilantro uh, at the grocery store? Because yeah. I like, coriander is dried cilantro and I like to put fresh cilantro on top. Now, you know what, Johnny, let's add a little bit more. I think there's some, some more chicken stock over there. See how this is pretty thick, you guys? And I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Johnny, let's add. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay. So I've added the spices and so this is where the magic happens. Yeah, this is the magic happens. And Johnny, we t typically we Vodders, like I say, we really like it spicy. This is chopped green chili. And this comes in cans. Now, if I had remembered to thaw them, and I didn't, Johnny, but over here, I've got some roasted frozen hatch chilies that we got. There was a, Johnny, last time we were at the powerhouse, there was somebody there selling roasted chilies. Oh, uh, so you picked some up. So we picked some up and brought them back and put them in the freezer and then I forgot. Okay, so one can, what do you think? Should we put in? Another can. Another can? I think we should. Should we go for it? Okay, and when I put this in, I typically don't drain it. I put the whole thing in. Now for some of you, this might be too, too much chili, though actually the green chilies are kind of mild. It's the jalapenos and things that are a little bit hotter. So this is kind of know, know thy family. As far as we're concerned, Johnny, there's typically, you cannot have too many green chilies. Okay, let's see, is that, let's, let's add the cheese now. Now, you know, I think that, yeah. So depending on what you like, sometimes I'll do a Mexican blend, sometimes we'll do Colby Jack, it's kind of whatever we, we have on hand. And you can add more or less to this, and sometimes I will add less, and then my boys will add more at the end. Okay, let's go ahead and dump that in here, Johnny. I love having a sous chef. So just a minute ago, they were both laughing at me because I was, who was I trying to talk to? Stuart, were I trying to talk to you or was I trying to talk to Johnny? Uh, me. I was trying to. Called was, me all three names. In the world. Yeah, I called Stuart, Johnny, Jamie, uh, Stuart, whatever your name is. So when I was growing up, there were 10 of us and my parents would go through practically all, you've heard, you heard, Grandpa and Momo do that probably when you were little. Go through all of our all of the kids' names before he would get to the right one. Johnny, Johnny just said that you should call out what? What did you say? You don't remember what he said? He said, why don't you just call out like number five or number 
our number six out of however many there were because there was a long roster to go through. And I bet, let, let you, you guys let me know in the comments if you ever do that at your house. Okay, so Johnny. Tell in me fact, to pour that I, in. Yeah, you pour that in while I stir. Okay, pour this in kind of slowly. Now I did heat this up in the microwave a little bit because if you add cold cream to it, it will separate a little bit. And so we're adding it slowly. Sometimes, if we're trying to be healthier, I will not add quite so much cream. But we're not trying to be healthier. <laughs> it is the holidays after all, isn't it, Johnny? Okay. So, mom is usually the one that airs on the side of healthy, and my boys and hubs typically are airing on the side of... Tastes good. Tastes good and decadence. Would you look and see if someplace in there I've got some red cayenne pepper, I think. And this is another one of those things that you can add um to your heart's content do i have any in here johnny uh, i don't you think can, you have any okay you oh cayenne right here you can tell we didn't really pre prepare very well that's why this is a vlog and not a highly a highly produced video okay how many times has somebody tried to call in <laughs> His brother has tried to call in. Nikki's tried to call in. Your dad's tried to call in. I'm just impressed you have a call watch. I know. I do have a call. This was a Christmas gift. So this point, that was dad. That was dad trying to call in. He, we sent him to the grocery store. Okay, I'm going to heat this up a little bit more. Okay, Johnny, let's add. A flavor bomb? A, no, no. <laughs> you just like saying flavor bomb. Is it time to add the flavor bomb? No, we've already added the flavor bomb. Okay, let's add the cheese, though. And then this will just slowly heat up. Let's do that. Let's say about half a bag, Johnny. Or more. <laughs> okay, let's do this. You, you guys can see why this is just so... It's, there's no way it's bad. No, it's <laughs> well, there's no way it tastes bad. Yeah, yeah. Now, it, it might... Your arteries may not thank you. Your arteries may not thank you. This okay. makes strong bones. There's a lot of <laughs> calcium in this. <laughs> Johnny... Okay, and Johnny, there's no goat milk in this. This is all this is all real dairy. Okay, would you like to do a taste test? Let's let the cheese melt for a bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> Johnny, come on, standard, standard. As I, you can see, nobody does what I tell them to. Stuart doesn't. Hubs doesn't. Johnny doesn't. I am surrounded by men who do not do as they're told. Now, when I, say, when, I, when I say it's time to eat, all of a sudden, I, everybody pays attention to me. Okay. 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 You want to taste it to see what needs to be added? Probably the flavor bomb. The, probably the flavor bomb. Even another flavor bomb? Okay. Oh, see, that's, the, that's when you know it's good, when you get those little driblets of... Jeez, yeah. What do you think? Seriously, does it need more of that flavor bomb? Can I just like put the spoon but, into the flavor? Well, let's let, no, let's not use it. This is the, this is the season of COVID. So let's do this here. Put as much in you as you think. Johnny critiques everything. He critiques my cooking. He critiques uh, my grammar, he is so well versed in geopolitical goings on that if I ever say anything incorrectly about what is happening in the world, he will correct me. And um, I, I have, I, I, is, isn't that right, Stuart? You've been here? You, you, so I'm, <laughs> what can I say? Everybody's always making fun of me and correcting me. Now, Johnny, you and I both get to brag a little bit here. I have a book coming out this year, and so does Johnny. So we both, mother and son team, one of these days, it was, it, when I used to fantasize, oh, yeah, when I used to fantasize about stuff, it would be about J Johnny and I would be writing a book together in Colorado, and we never did that, but we did both write a book independently. I wrote a book on gardening, Johnny wrote a book on Singapore. On Singapore. So it will come out, it'll, will it come out this year? Probably this year. Probably this year. So I'll let you guys know about that too. So that's kind of exciting. And, um, and on a serious note, Johnny, 
would edit a lot of my work for me. He would read over it and let me know if it made any sense. And conversely, I would do that for you too, would I not? Back in high school and college. Uh, college applications, probably. Co college, now, I, I, you would also ask for my opinion on some of the other stuff that you wrote. His is a little bit more highbrow, um, but seriously, we, we have helped each other. Okay, so there you go. Now, once it's done, you want to turn down the heat because you really don't want it to scorch, and you do have to kind of keep an eye on it. And then when we serve it, we like to serve it with all sorts of, of um, oh, all sorts of sides, like chopped cilantro, additional cheese. Sometimes I even like to have jalapeno juice to dribble and drizzle that in there because it kind of brightens it up a little bit. Sometimes if we didn't have so many flavor bombs in it, we would have, we would have some chopped jalapenos like these. I would get some of these and people could add that or as Johnny said, Tabasco, though I don't really like to add Tabasco to it, but my boys typically overrule me on that and they will add Tabasco to just about everything. And then I'll serve it with some tortilla chips of any kind. Um, sometimes I'll just have soft tortillas that they can dip into it. What else do we sometimes serve with it? Um, oh, sliced avocado and yeah, that's, what that's what you had in it that was sliced avocado but it also looks kind of pretty and it makes a beautiful table setting then when you put this in a really gorgeous terrine and you've got all of those those pretty little uh, side dressings that you can put on the top so i am going to plate up a little bit of this isn't that what they say in the cooking shows let me plate up or bowl up a little bit of this because Stuart's going to take off momentarily and he wants some of this before he leaves. So we will definitely make sure that he gets taken care of. What do you think, Johnny? Did we do good? Looks pretty good. Looks pretty I'm good, pretty hungry. decadent. I, you guys, like I say, you can't mess this up. How do you mess up just chicken and then adding cream and cheese and chilies? I, I just don't know how you can go wrong. So there you go. This is from my family to yours, our green chili and rice soup. We call it chicken rice chili. And did you just go like this? Yeah, it's a thumbs up. It's a thumbs up from our family to yours. So if you want something to make for Christmas Eve, and if you want to spend time with your family members making fun of you, then I highly recommend that you make chicken chili rice soup with a loved one in your household. If you are interested, here's my in the kitchen cooking with Johnny outfit for the day. My top is one I got online, I don't know how many years ago. You guys have seen it before. I love this color of red. My britches came from Amazon. They're my new favorite jeans. If you are interested in the link, just let me know. Set, uh, just put something in the comment section below and I will send you the link. And my favorite thing to cook in when I'm in the kitchen are just really thick socks. And these came from Old Navy. And and I think they're particularly festive. One thing for you guys to look out for, I wanted to point this out to you. The tea towels at Trader Joe's are really great. I use them for a lot of different things. And this year I'm actually using them to gift my candy. I'm gonna wrap up my, my candy bundles in these Trader Joe towels. And my earrings are just some big hoops that I've had forever. So there you go, there's my outfit of the day. Well, it feels more like a spring day outside than a day at the end of November going into Christmas. It is in the upper 60s to low 70s. We still have not had a freeze, which is kind of scary. There's no freeze in the forecast for the next 10 days, no precipitation in the forecast. So I'm getting a little nervous because we really need the rain. Nevertheless, if you want to be outside, then it's absolutely it could not be more beautiful. There's no wind. Stuart, in fact, would you mind circling around and showing this absolutely gorgeous maple over at my neighbor's?
at my friend Carrie's. She was my son's nursery school teacher growing up. They've lived here about as long as we have. And then yesterday, here's a little peek in, in, inside our weekend. Yesterday, Hubs and I went down to the Wichita Mountains and we did a little bit of hiking. We, we gave a test drive to his new knee uh, to see how far he could go. And he did, he was slow, but he did pretty well. And we had a little picnic and and took the canoe out which needs to go back but it's kind of obviously everybody's really active because the weather's so nice including the pickleball players across the street so this is such a fun thing in our neighborhood um, our neighbors across the street have a tennis court which is very uncharacteristic for our neighborhood and they recently had it redone and Right now you can play pickleball or tennis, but pickleball seems to be the crowd favorites right now. Stuart can't wait to get over there and get on the on the registry. And they so kindly have, have let the neighborhood use it. So there is somebody always out there playing pickleball. It's just, it's so fun and makes me love my neighborhood even more. So today my intent is to kind of show you what's going on as we're kind of in a transitional mode between the end of fall, November and Thanksgiving and Christmas. So here's what what is going on today and Da, da, da. Here's my question of the day. Um, I want to know what the temperatures are where you live because it is uncharacteristically warm here. It makes me nervous. So please tell me, as always, what zone you're in and what kind of weather you've been having and then whether or not you're able to get out this weekend and get up your Christmas lights and such. So there's my question of the day. Um, so in addition to transitioning between Thanksgiving and all of the pumpkins and trying to get my wreaths up, I'm having to do a lot of watering. So I've got my hose out, this giraffe hose reel. I found, sound like a commercial, but this, by the way, is also on my Christmas list. If you go to lindavotter.com under shop, I've got all of my Christmas items that I've been telling you about. Please go there. Stuart will put a link up above. Um, and we are adding to it almost daily. So there you go, there's my, there's my plug for things that I know you guys will ask me about in the future. So it has just been so dry. So I planted, I, in fact, I think I did a video a while back of how I planted all sorts of hyacinths and things from Brex in, in this window box. And then I planted lots of pansies. And the pansies, I, I was horrified when I came out this morning and saw how droopy the pansies were because they were, it's been also very, very windy. And so they were dried out and not looking too happy. And so I really had to water this down. Also, the kales that I put in here and the ornamental cabbages, they also were very, very dry. So I had to give everything a really deep, intensive watering, including this pot which has Southern Living Agapanthus in it, and I haven't had to take it in because it really has not been cold enough. We haven't had a freeze. In fact, this is a gorgeous coleus that I think of as an indicator plant, and it's not drooping at all because we haven't had any kind of freeze. What I can do uh, in addition to just, in addition to watering and trying to keep an eye on things to make sure they get established, is I can really definitely now st start transitioning out all of my, my pumpkins and gourds that the squirrels have just been delighting in them. So I, I don't know what this program is, you guys, but I think it's wonderful. I noticed that my neighbors over here had, and a number of my neighbors on the street, had all of their pumpkins put out at the curb. And I wasn't really sure why, kind of like we do with our Christmas trees afterwards. So I asked a friend of mine, a neighbor who was walking by, and he said that he there apparently was a flyer that had gone around that somebody is coming by and picking up all of the pumpkins. For what purpose, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna guess it's probably for the zoo or something because they will use it as food and they probably have the resources to do it. So at any rate, these are the last two small ones. The two big kahunas right there, the Big Max Stewart is gonna have to heave ho down to the street because those are, those are just, uh, uh, a herniated disc for me waiting to happen. So I am 
like I say, watering everything here. And then tomorrow, this is one of those kinds of things where I finally have gotten smart. Now, I let me back up a little bit. I change my interior Christmas and seasonal decor a lot. I mix it up every single year. The outside, I love it to be traditional, and I do the same thing every year. It's very formulaic. I'm sure I did a video on it last year, a holiday video. And what I do is I hang four wreaths, and these, by the way, they are artificial because my the front of my house faces south. And if I use real wreaths, they would dry out in a heartbeat given our winds and high temperatures and strong sun. So I have four of these wreaths that are all lit and all four of them will hang on the first story windows. So I've got two that will hang on my living room window and how they hang. I had this done years ago and it was one of the best investments I made. I just got someone to put some grommets in the ribbon that hangs them and I did this to all four wreaths and then all I have to do is take the grommets and hang them on the, on the nails that are just above these windows. And there are similarly placed nails above the dining room windows. That way I know they all are even, they all hang at exactly the same length they for both indoor and outdoor display and they do that every year because this is very traditional for me and i love the classic way it looks especially when it snows Stuart, we might maybe we'll be able to dig up a picture of what they look like when it snows but i have four of them so here here though is my tip every year I have hung these myself. Hubs and I have hung these ourselves. And now I've decided that I'm not gonna do that anymore, that it's probably time for me to have somebody else do that. I, I feel def definitely like I'm physically capable of doing it, but I'm gonna be smart and I'm gonna let somebody else do it. So I've got some people coming that are gonna come tomorrow and they're gonna help me get them all lit and hung and plugged in. Now I've got two on uh, this window and then I have two on the dining room window on the other side of my front door and then I have another really fun wreath that I'll be hanging on my front door and I'll show you it later. For right now, I can't bear to take down that terrain wreath. I may just fill it with some greenery and things. I'm not really sure. And then all of my lights and everything for the front will just be on these five wreaths, two on either, either side of the front door and the one on the on the on the front door itself. And those are very, the, those lights vary in size. Now, if, if you go out and you kind of look, Stuart, if you don't mind kind of panning, you'll see I, pl I have planted lots and lots of pansies. And we've pretty much done it all around the, the front part of the flower beds in the foreground. And they're, they're really still blooming pretty intensively. And once I start giving them a feed in January and February, which I will actually do, then they will put on a show of their own before any of the tulips and things begin. Stuart, if you don't mind, would you kind of pan around so people can get an idea of how beautiful that vibrant red will look against at least I think so anyway. Tell me what you think against the house. It looks very traditional, very kind of English, I think. But a lot of the, the shrubs, the things in the front flower beds, they, they still look very, very lush and very, very green. All of the hellebores, obviously all of the, the evergreens, but the spirea, it hasn't 
lost any of its leaves yet. The Encore azaleas back there, they still have big fat buds on them. And as long as it stays, I guess, warm and doesn't freeze, they'll probably just continue to bloom. I still need to move around and transplant some of the foxglove, but the, the front yard is just, it's, it's just really kind of holding its own. And I think the evergreens look really, really nice. Here comes Hubs in Dot. He, he is driving, he's driving Dot today, my little Fiat with the top down because it's so beautiful and because he's got the canoe hooked up to his. So some other things that are coming up this week, the rest of all of the pumpkins will go down to the street. Um, on, on Wednesday, I hope to go get a Christmas tree and I pro I'm gonna do it in one of two different places, either at, at Bricks down here while I got all of my pumpkins or there's another really, really fun, wonderful area that has pop-up shops and all sorts of things that so I can shop and get my Christmas tree and a beer simultaneously. It's in one of the cooler, hipper parts of Oklahoma City. What's that area called, Stuart? Do you know? It, I guess it is part of Midtown, but if you're coming to Oklahoma City, you definitely want to visit there. And the other reason I like it is because those pop-up shops are all local places, and it's so important to shop local right now. We're also going to be visiting some of the other shops up and down Western Avenue, which is within walking distance of, of my house, and some of the places that we'll be shopping for Christmas presents this year. So Stuart, have I forgotten anything? Thing. Don't forget, you guys, to let me uh, let me know what's going on in your neck of the woods, whether or not you've had a freeze yet, whether or not you're, you two are kind of worried about the weather. I still have more bulbs to plant in the back, however, so I'm, I'm, I guess I'm still glad that the weather hasn't turned. But I am definitely ready to get my jingle on. Are you, Stuart? And if you haven't already really paid attention to it, definitely make sure that you check out the new animation, our Christmas animation that's up. It's my favorite of all four animations. So there you go. There's my, my little uh, vlog, my vlog for today. You guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Well, if you've held on this long, here is your fashion epilogue for today. Now, Stuart was just commenting, we've just finished the video, and he was he has been meaning to tell me that it smells absolutely amazing with all the people doing stuff on the street, and somebody is burning a pinon fire, which is just our very favorite, so it's, it's a lovely day. Um, let's see, my drink du jour is... <laughs> is my Trader Joe's flavored cranberry li uh, lime juice seltzer water because I, we go through these these like crazy, don't we, Stuart? Um, my hat, this is my favorite hat of the moment. This is off of Amazon, which reminds me to tell you guys, go to my website and go to, we'll put try to put a link, and there'll be a link in the description for my website. And if you go under shop, I have my Christmas gift list. And this will be one of the things that's on the Christmas gift list, in addition to some other recommendations that I've made that Stuart's made that Carrie, Carrie has made. And we will, yeah, there's, a, we'll try to put a link and a card up above. But also we are adding to it almost daily. So you wanna check back regularly, make sure to sign up for my newsletter and everything while you're there. But I digress. Uh, my top is thrifted. It is Gap, but I got it at Goodwill. My britches are also thrifted, but they have been updated. So I promised to show you what they look like after I put these really fun patches on them. And actually it was Jamie's mom, Susu, who did the sewing for me. I got, uh, I found an old, but very vibrant and fun shirt at Goodwill and we chopped it up and made patches and so they are my patches for my jeans which are also thrifted so that's a really fun Christmas project if you're handy with a needle and we'll also put a link above 
to the video where I described doing this process and what my uh, inspiration was. My boots are just Uggs booties. I love them. I've had them for years. They are one of my most comfortable pair of boots. My bracelets. My bracelets. Uh, this came from a lady that I helped down the street one day and she gifted this to me. And my bracelet, this is one of the things that's on my Christmas gift list or this line of jewelry. This is from Janet Mavic and her Nature Inspired Jewelry. And my earrings. Oh, these earrings are kind of fun. I got these at a gift shop in at a museum in New Mexico and I love them. They're turquoise. So there you go. There's my fashion epilogue for today. Okay, so Hubs is off running errands today, leaving me here to work at home. So I'm giving you a walkabout, a holiday walkabout, though it doesn't feel very wintry or holiday-ish at all. Yesterday it got up to almost 80, didn't it, Stuart? Today, I think it's supposed to get up to 74. We're still waiting for that first freeze. It's still very dry. I've mentioned that before, but I want to, I mentioned it again because I want to give you guys a shout out. When I asked about what weather was doing in your part of the country or your part of the world, I could not believe how great you guys responded. I, I, I was just overwhelmed and believe me i don't always comment or whatever but i read every one of those and it so helps me realize what's really how things are changing and what's going on in other people's areas and other people's zones and i hope you guys will read each other's comments because it is just invaluable information if you want to know what other gardeners in your area and in your zone are doing so thank you thank you for that and make sure to stay tuned to the end because just when i said i not many people send christmas cards i got three in the past two days or three days from several of you and i'll give a shout out to you guys at the end so thank you for that uh, my question for today is first of all do you have do you put up a real tree or do you put up an artificial tree and no judgment here because i know so many people have to put up an artificial tree if you do why do you do it because it's, is it more convenient is it because it's just family tradition is it because you've got allergies uh just why is it i put up a real tree every year because i just have to have the fragrance though every year my tree is getting a little bit smaller and actually later this afternoon Stuart, you want to go with me to get a Christmas tree? We'll take you to where I get a Christmas tree. And um, so every year it kind of it kind of changes. But I'm I'm curious to know. And some of you, again, no judgment here. You may not put up a Christmas tree at all. And in and over time, my idea about that has changed. I like my trees to be much simpler with less ornaments and just a little bit more streamlined, a little bit maybe more Scandinavian or something. So anyhow, give me your Christmas tree protocol for what you do at your house um, at the holidays, because I really want to know. So then let's just do a little bit of a walkabout. Um, Stuart, first of all, if you don't mind turning around and showing everybody that I did get my wreaths up and they need a little bit of adjusting, but they are up, all the lights are working. Look at the pretty butterfly. <laughs> there should not be butterflies this time of year, I don't think. I've also seen whitefly and wasps because we still have not had a hard freeze. Uh, but I love my lights at Christmas time. I think the red bows really stand out and really pop against my brick, especially this time of day when everything's washed out from the south sun. The, the brick and even my roof and everything looks very washed out. So it's, um, I think it's, I, I like the way it looks. Okay, so over here now, I, do, I know a lot of people clean up all of their leaves and they compost them, they put them in the landfill, whatever they do with them. In the front yard, this is what I do. I just blow all of the leaves off the turf, which is how also I take care of the turf. I just blow them into the flower beds because they really need to be mulched 
for a couple of different reasons. The, all of this leafy debris provides a natural mulch which breaks down somewhat over the winter time, but I also like it because it helps keep the moisture in. I've watered really, really well. Then I blow the leaves on top, so it helps retain the moisture. And the other thing that it does is protect any little tender seedlings. Once it does get cold, I want it to keep I want it to re the ground to remain cold so my bulbs don't come up prematurely. So that way the ground isn't exposed to this hot western sun and I don't get as much frost heave and things like that when the temperatures get inordinately warm. So that's kind of what I do. I also do it, and I don't really mind, even though it in some locations, like down the street at my friend uh, Tommy and Sydney's, their pansies are looking absolutely unbelievable right now. Just really, really beautiful. They're planted very densely. Mine are spread out a little bit more, and I don't really care if they put on any kind of show over the winter. I just want them to get a foothold for spring so that in spring they're ready to rock and roll. I also blow these leaves because boy, the pansies have really been drying out and this leafy cover will help keep moisture in. Now, Stuart, if you don't mind uh, coming over here, I wanna show a couple of things. So most of my pansies look pretty good, but look here, I've got some pansies. Let me get around on this side. I've got some pansies here, Stuart. And I, look, I've got a pansy here that is just completely dried out and desiccated. So what is this? I call them indicator plants. And this is an indication from me that my sprinkler system is not hitting these and that no water is getting to this area. So it's probably because one of these boxwoods or something is in the way and I need to reassess that and rethink that for next year. So I can do a couple of things. What I'll probably do right now is because these, I don't want to have to be a slave to watering all winter, so I'll probably just move those two back a little bit to where the sprinkler hits. So that's just a pretty common answer to that. These are what I call indicator plants. They're indicating to me that something is, is wrong in the exposure or the sprinkler system or something like that. In poker, Stuart, would you call that a tell? You'd call it a tell. Stuart is a, is a, really good poker player. So in poker, we would call that a tell. So I look for these kind of tells around my garden. There's some here, and then I've also noticed down here, right along the curb, street side, this looks very messy, and some of these also are pretty dried out. So what I think I'll do, instead of trying to get water to them, I'm just gonna move these pansies. I've watered them by hand, and I'm just gonna move these pansies to an area that I know will get saturated more completely. And isn't, because this is a pretty far distance. Stuart, if you don't mind showing where the house is, this is all the way out to the curb. So then if I want to hand water these, I've gotta drag my hose all the way out to here. And even though I've got one of those wonderful giraffe re retractable hose reels, it's still kind of a pain to have to get it all the way out here. And by the way, so many of you are asking about, about those uh, giraffe hose reels and some of the other things that I recommend. I'm not doing a sales pitch here. I'm just telling you that we'll put a link above or in the description below or just go to lindavotter.com, sign up. And, and you can go to shop and my Christmas list will be there with all of my favorite products that we're adding to regularly um, and all of the links so you'll know. These are products that are tried and true that I really love. Um, so that's kind of what's going on in here. Now, even though I'm a little bit worried because it's so warm, let me show you. Let's go this way. Stuart, if you'll just kind of pan the flower beds, look at how happy all of the self, things that have self-seeded are. Look at that columbine. Unbelievable. Hellebores that have self-seeded over here. And boy, is it going to be an absolutely spectacular foxglove year next season. Because look at all this foxglove. Hello, Mr. Squirrel. Okay, you want to know something that really irritates me, Stuart? 
how those squirrels were eating all of my pumpkins when I had them out on display. Now that I've got them in the compost pile and they can feed on them to their heart's content, they're not paying any attention to them. And now I want them to feed on them so they'll break down. At any rate, here, here is a lot of that foxglove. You can see there's golden fever few here. There's more hellebores. And then over in here, you could see the pansies are just kind of in a drift. I've showed you this before. But, I mean, this is how warm it's been, you guys. It feels like spring. My encore azaleas are really, really doing great. Look at these that still have blooms on them, Stuart. Isn't that a gorgeous pink? I just really think that's beautiful. But this is a surprise to me, maybe because they're a little bit more mature. But notice how on those encores, the foliage is changing, that beautiful fall color. And I imagine that the more mature they get, the better the coloration will be. These have buds on them. So do these. I think this is really going to be beautiful next spring. But look at all of these foxglove. I self -se I seeded all of these foxglove. These are all new seedlings from this year. So obviously I'll divide some of these. I might even put some in pots. Look at the buds on here. But I am, I'm going to have a brilliant, brilliant stand of foxglove next year. They should be really incredible. And again, they're not just concentrated here. I've got foxglove that are everywhere through these flower beds. So it may look a little bit scruffy with all of the different kinds of things coming and going, but I promise you it will be worth putting up with a little bit of scruffiness now for it to be absolutely breathtaking next spring, or at least that's how it looks in my imagination. So up on the front porch, you can hear everybody is working out in their yard. I just want to show you that the, all the topiary, we still haven't had a hard freeze. So I brought the topiary, my myrtle topiaries in, in anticipation that it was going to freeze. It didn't. I don't see a freeze anywhere in the forecast. So believe me, they're much happier being outside. And I decided to give them all a vacation, or at least my large ones here on this south facing wall. So they're happy here. and. It's not exactly part of my landscape, but as long as they're happy, that means the amount of time that they'll be indoors will be even less than it normally is. So they'll be that stressed for a shorter amount of time. So all of these are just out here temporarily. I just had to water my window box again, all of this stuff because it's been so dry. Here's a tease, you guys. I've got all of these jade starts that I'm going to take over to my friend Phil who's going to teach us how once he gets his holiday decor up and gets organized he can, he's going to teach us how to bonsai these. So that's really fun and let me show you maybe one more thing up here before we go to the back and I want to show you what's going on there. Look at that gorgeous that purple isn't it beautiful? And there, I can just practically hear the roots growing of all of those hyacinths. All of these hyacinths were, were from Brex bulbs this year. Um, but what I want to show you is that this is one of my urns from my QVC collection, the English Garden Urn. I think there might still be some available. Go to the Linda Vodder Home Collection on qvc.com that we'll put a link above. And by the way, if you go to my page and it just shows lanterns, something is awry with their link right now, just plug in my name again and you'll get to what products still remain. But I love this and this is going to be what I put my little Christmas tree in. And I think it'll be absolutely beautiful on a pedestal in my living room. So I've been looking forward to doing that all year. Uh, also, my QVC items, there'll be a link on my Christmas list. So make sure you guys go there. Um, and I know some, a lot of stuff is sold out, but some of it is being restocked. So check it out and see. So that is what's going on in the front yard. 
I'm, I'm excited because I just have a few more things to do and then I'm gonna put it all to bed. So now let's go to the backyard. So my driveway is still kind of a mess. Lots of, lots of Christmas elving going on here. Is Christmas elving a verb, I guess? Anyhow, all of these pots, the only, the, pretty much the bulbs that I have remaining to plant are all gonna be in containers. And I'm gonna pot up all of these containers. And if you guys want a lightweight liner, let's say you've got a cash po or something, or you want a liner, maybe for one of my baskets from QVC or something, then I get these just basket liners off of Amazon and there's different brands and there's different types or whatever. Uh, some will fit one container better than another, but you can put those in there and you'll have something lightweight that will kind of kind of form fit whatever your container is. So that's on my to-do list this weekend. I've still got plenty of time left to get all of these in. One thing I'm kind of concerned about is if our winters are going to be this warm at the front end, I might need to consider starting to chill my bulbs or getting them pre-chilled from Brex or Color Blends, wherever I get them from, before they mail them to me, if we're starting to transition into a warmer zone. So it's something I'm just kind of thinking about. So this is on my to-do list uh, for this weekend. But now I want to show you some things that are really, they're so much more intense color-wise in the backyard. So let's go to the backyard. So look here, I think it's just so spectacular. Look at the barberry there, Stuart, and then look up behind it at the almost exact coloration in that Bradford pear. Not one of my favorite trees. Nevertheless, it does color beautifully. Blue sky. Oh, with the blue sky, it looks it really looks beautiful. And if you don't mind swinging around over here, you can see the barberry on this side. This is both orange rocket barberry and some golden barberry. And barberry, I have noticed changes. It's kind of like, you know, all maples don't color exactly the same color. Well, all the barberries, I'm kind of not really sure what I'm gonna get. But recently, I did a flower arrangement and used some of the cuttings from this barberry. They're a little bit past that now because they're about to lose their leaves. But isn't, I think, I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at it from that direction, Stuart, how pretty it looks. Now they're getting a little bit large. So what I'll do right now, I want them to be large and pendulous and arching like that. They practically, they practically glow, I think. And from my kitchen window up that way, looking back through here, the view is just spectacular. So what I think I'll do is just let them all just kind of do their thing right now. And then, Look at that color of red and purple and gold. It's really just lovely. So I'll, I'll let them grow, do their thing, and then probably what I'll do is in the spring, I'll cut them back pretty hard and they won't be so twiggy or so thorny and their size will be a little bit more manageable. But I love the way this blousy look blousiness and arching canes and looseness looks against this tidy blue point juniper bulb that was just a topiary that I started from scratch I've told you guys a million times I've still got some of these topiaries they're still out here and you know what they're gonna stay out here until we've got a freeze on the horizon and I've pretty much I, I am getting ready to put everything to bed back here I still have some watering to do today and i'm going to water everything in real well i finish finish planting all of my brex bulbs and everything in this area and then i've got some more bulbs in pots that i'm going to plant back in here and i've got some hyacinths and a few things i'm going to plant in this in this wine trough. So I'm kind of excited about that. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this bay topiary a lot closer to the house 
because I'll be using some of its foliage in Christmas decorating and in cooking and things of that nature. Plus it's not cold hardy and I'm gonna to wanna to bring it in. Another thing that I did, I mentioned it in one of my Instagram posts, Instagram stories. And if you're not following me on Instagram, just Google my name and Potager blog will come up. Um, I added additional, doesn't look very attractive right now, but I added additional drip line in here. So I would get a lot better coverage than I've had in the past. And I even put it on the exterior of the boxwood. And let me tell you, I just have really, really itchy fingers to get this pruned and in shape again, but I just can't. So I'm just having to be patient. So you guys, please help me with that. So I think stuff looks, it, it looks pretty good. It's still kind of messy. I've got some more work to do back here, but you know, that's okay. It's winter time things. It's all right for stuff to not look great. And then um, let's go, can we go over here, Stuart, where it's in the shade a little bit more? Cause I want to give a shout out to some of you guys who sent me the sweetest cards. Um, and I'm not showing these really to get more of you to send me cards. I just, it's just such a gesture of kindness. Um, so Diane Jones in North Ridgeville, Ohio, sent me just a sweet, sweet card, sweet Christmas card. And what I love is the, the personal notes and expressions of, of of just gratitude and gardening camaraderie <laughs> where they tell me about what's going on in their in their area this is from julie mangold in westchester iowa love her stamps my husband was really eyeing those stamps that was kind of fun and she sent a fun a fun card and look at this i love this she sent me a picture of what she did just with a singular branch. She said she was inspired by my singular branch. And she too wrote just a lovely, lovely note. So thank you, Julie. And then Deborah Ryan. Deborah might be one of my longest followers. Deborah, are you one of my longest followers or just most dedicated followers? I'm not sure, from Freedom, Pennsylvania. And she sent me just, I love this card. I think it's just very, very dear. And she just sent me some really fun, some really fun things and a fun note. Love her handwriting. So I want to give a shout out and say a big thank you and happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you're celebrating. I want to wish all of you that as we continue through the holiday seasons because as my my sweet dad said i'll close on this very sentimental nostalgic note when he was at the end of his life and he was in assisted living he was wondering where everyone was he said it's it's christmas he said it's christmas where is everyone well i come from a very very large family and obviously for the entirety of most of his life there were always lots and lots of people around lots of kids and their friends and my mom well not so much when he was in assisted living and he was trying to convey to us just what he meant and Finally, if we said, well, Christmas isn't, you know, for another two weeks or Christmas isn't for another week or whatever. I said, it's not Christmas yet. That's why not everyone is here. And he said, but, but he said, Christmas is a series. Christmas isn't just a day. It's a series. And I loved that. And I thought, yeah, he's right. It's not just a day. It's a season. It's a series. It's a series of things you do with their loved ones. And he was missing his loved ones at that point in time. And I am missing him right now. So there you go. Happy holidays. I hope you enjoyed this little walk around. Let me know what's going on in your neck of, wood, neck of the woods. And most of all, make sure to answer my question of the day. Are you artificial or real when it comes to your, your Christmas tree? See you guys later. Well, I just finished my workout. It always feels so good to be done with it, but I still have my workout clothes on before I change to go run my errands. So my top I've had for years, I got this at Target. I like it because it zips up and down from the front and I don't have to put it over my head. My earrings are these sweet little star earrings. They're much smaller than I normally wear and I got these at Alter's 
altered state many, many years ago, and I really like them. Uh, my britches are the Zaia, Zaia, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, active, that these were recommended by my trainer, and you guys have seen these before, and the top I have underneath it is also by them, and I've just gone on Puma tennis shoes, so nothing fancy going on here today. Such as it is, there is my outfit du jour. I have some things to show you. But first, let me talk a little bit, bit more about the high winds that we've got today. There's just, Stuart, if you could kind of just concentrate on some of the areas where just leaves are collecting everywhere. And it leads me to my question of the day. I, I collect my leaves or clean up my leaves about once a week. Sometimes I'll do a des designated area where I'm cleaning up some leaves, but but right now there's just no point. There are still leaves coming down and I think I'm just gonna wait for a while until these high winds end. All the leaves have blown off of the trees and from my, my neighbor's yards down the street before I do a, a, a another major cleanup. But here's my question of the day. How do you guys tackle leaf cleanup at your homes? I know some of you live in areas that just have tons of really magnificent and large deciduous trees. And when all those leaves come down, it's something you have to stay on top of. So that's my question of the day. How do you stay on top of leaf cleanup if it's an issue in your area? And what do you do with those leaves afterwards? Do you compost them? Do you use them as mulch or what? So this is how, how extraordinary this season has been so far. We have yet to have a freeze. Stuart, I think we're gonna get one this weekend. Um, and, and, and I think it's gonna be a guaranteed freeze because I always check the 10 day forecast and it showed that a lot of times it'll show like 31, 30, and then it doesn't materialize into a freeze because the ground temperatures are so warm. But now it says it's supposed to get down to 22 just in time for my son Johnny to get home and he'll be happy to have a cold weather Christmas. But this is how strange it's been. Look at this, you guys. I just harvested these yesterday and these were from, this is one of those kind of inexplicable garden gifts, but this is from a tomato plant that went to seed on the side of my house next to my neighbor's drive and I just let it grow there and it's been very, very happy and, it, and I still haven't pulled it out and it continues to produce tomatoes and it's still laden with all sorts of green tomatoes on it. So go figure. Yesterday, I went out and I cut some, it's not exactly Christmassy, you guys, but nevertheless, look at these gorgeous Encore Azaleas. And, and Stuart, let's put a card to all the different varieties of Encore Azaleas. They have buds all over them and a lot of them are still blooming. And I may go out and, and harvest and, and pick a lot more of the white ones to do in a Christmas a uh, floral arrangement with more traditional things, but look at all of those gorgeous Encore azaleas. And there's a lot more, obviously, that I didn't pick. And then, in addition to the azaleas, here are some more spring and summer traditional flowers that are blooming. My golden fever few, some of it is blooming. I still have some hydrangeas blooming and lots of these drift roses. So like I say, it's just been very, very odd and it makes me a little bit nervous because I have put, and I'm finishing that up today, hundreds if not thousands of bulbs in the ground and it really needs to get cold for those bulbs to perform next spring so we're keeping our fingers crossed so on this walkabout i kind of want to show you what's going on in this last last blast of 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 trying to get garden chores done before moving inside for for the holidays so i had a number of lights that burned out in my string lights so i want to make sure that looks festive so i did have somebody come and help me this morning i held the ladder for them because i'm not doing ladders especially in this wind and i replaced just i keep them on um, uh, in stock at all times so that i can replace any bulbs that have burned out. I, 
I may not be cleaning up all of my leaves, but I am continually blowing them at least away from the front door or from any doors actually, so that they don't blow into my laundry room or my entryway every time I open and shut the door. And that is something that I do multiple times a day. I have a few topiaries. These are two of them. I have a few of these compact myrtle topiaries. It's been so warm that I have left some of them outside and these will come in tomorrow because the freeze is supposed to hit tomorrow night. Today it's supposed to get up to I think 74 and tomorrow I think it's supposed to get up to around 70 and then the cold front comes through which is probably why we've got lots of this wind. Um, because it's been so warm I haven't gathered all of my little potted boxwoods and I'm going to do that and all of these guys this one has one of those cute little egg trellises on it from my QVC line. Stuart, let's put a link above. So I will just put all of these guys together like this, huddled up against this fireplace, and I'll water them really well because we have not had, it's another thing that's stressing me out a little bit, we haven't had a drop of rain in I don't know how long. We are, the entire state is in drought now. Um, I think we're in moderate drought and western Oklahoma is in extreme drought. So I'm gonna water all of these really well, these little tiny ones I actually might bring inside. And then I'm gonna blow a whole mass of the additional leaves that have fallen, I'm going to blow them on top of all of these little pots to mulch them. So that's one of my last things on my list to do in my final garden roundup of chores. I've got a few more bulbs that I'm going to plant in pots. I've got a few more. I love this blend from Color Blends. It's called Smooch. I've got a few more bulbs that I'm going to be planting in pots. I'm going to try to do that later this afternoon. I am going to tend. I wanted to show you how cute do my little Christmas trees look. So I'm going to water these really, really well. And then I've got a cute little tableau that I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to stage it but that's something that I am going to be working on. Um, I'm moving a lot of the firewood from here to beside the door so that once it does turn cold, I'll have adequate firewood that I don't have to even cross down the steps and over to the wood pile to get. I'll have it right by my door. This huge elephant bush has been outside. I actually earlier in the season I brought it in and then I realized that it was still going to be warm for a really long period of time so I brought it back out again along with my olive tree. So both of these, these are a little bit heavy for me. Stuart would you help me move these into the office? Um, one of the advantages of having Stuart here uh, I have another hanging basket of begonias that will come in. I can see that a lot of this stuff, amazingly, it needs to be watered. So I'm going to give everything one last good watering before the freeze tomorrow. Um, I have some rosemaries that are still out and I will bring those in and some of these I might bring into the kitchen because I think they're kind of festive looking. One thing that I do you guys, I, I don't know why, but when I when I have them, my topiaries inside for the holidays, then I put moss over the gravel. I'll sprinkle actually some of those mosquito bits to ward off the fungus gnats and and then I'll, I'll saturate some moss and I'll put that on top as a mulch because the gravel just doesn't look very holiday-ish to me. It's more of a summer garden thing. So I will mulch these in moss and that gives them also a more decorative look, I think. And I kind of like that during the holidays. Stuart, uh, turn around. Look 
at all of the buds on this Chinese snowball viburnum. Can you see all of them as well as I can? There are hundreds and hundreds of them. And they actually, they survived even the Arctic blast last year. So there will be, they should be fine no matter how cold it gets. Don't blow, blow over Stuart. Even Stuart almost blew over. Um, I'm doing some final, what I think of as getting my, my uglies over with right now so that this will be absolutely absolutely spectacular in the spring. So you guys know all of the transitioning that I did here. I am itching to be able to prune this. I also, way in the back, I had all the dead wood cut out of that Nandina domestica hedge that took such a hit last year. I had all of the dead wood cut out so there's nothing but foliage in there. And I will harvest the rest of those red berries to use inside for, for decor so that the birds don't eat them. Um, another couple things that I'm doing, I just planted, gosh, at least, I really lost count, at least 75 uh, party punch and Dordogne tulips in here from Brex and it pretty much filled this up. Now what I'm going to do, most of my containers that I plant tulips in, I move to my garage and I keep them under cover during the winter months. But obviously some of these are just too large to bring in. I've got them planted in, in here, I've got them planted in here, and I've got another huge pot at the end of this border. So on these, it's been so hot and dry that I am watering them a little bit. I'm gonna water this, and then the next time we get hopefully some rain, after that, I'm gonna cover these with a trash bag so they don't get too much moisture. And then I will set these cages, these are from Gardener Supply, and I'm gonna set them back on top so that it will hold the plastic in place. And also, I've got them over these two large round pots right now to keep squirrels from digging. It's always a little bit iffy on how well these outdoor containers perform but when they're spectacular, they're just beyond. So I'm hoping for a, for a good year in that regard. I've got a few more alliums that I need to plant in here. And then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna sprinkle some more poppy seeds. And then I've got bags of leaves that I'm getting ready to use in my works leaf shredder. I'm gonna shred those leaves, and then once all the work is done in here, I'm gonna mulch all of that with those shredded leaves. So I've still got that to do. So I'm just frantically trying to get all of these, these last chores done while the weather is still pretty nice. Um, Stuart, if you would, look at how green, I, I interrupted myself, but look at how green all of this Mondo grass looks right now. So many of you ask me about it, and I am not always good about pointing out what it is. I've had lots of sprinkler work done where I've added some more drip line. And then here's a perfect opportunity right in here. I've got all of this Poana weedy grass in here. Now would be the perfect time once it gets cold to pour some boiling water on that to kill out that poana that's growing up in here. So I can get kind of a head start on spring next year and I don't have to do everything in the spring. There's another couple of plants that I wanna show you, or one in particular that has performed, and I don't talk about it enough, it has performed just so exceptionally and I, I wanna show it to you. And I think you can maybe even now still buy it in plants by mail or through Southern Living. If you don't want to get it now, obviously before winter, I understand, but definitely put it on your list for next spring. So let me show you what that is. I think I've showed you some before of what it looks like. In route, let me point out, look at all of 
this columbine, these really warm temperatures have accelerated germination of a lot of the things that went to seed, like the larkspur and the poppies and um, the columbine, the foxglove. It's pretty amazing. You can also see I've got a couple of areas that I'll come back in and have to replenish the gravel. But this is what I wanted to point out to you. And it's this fashedra. And I, I kind of consider it a staple now, so I don't talk about it enough. But it is a, a, a kind of a cross between a fashedra and then hedra, the, the, um, the ivy. So it's really, really beautiful. It has this kind of vertical growth habit. I use it a lot in cut flower arrangements. It's great at Christmas time because it looks wonderful with those red berries and things. Now here's the thing about it that has so impressed me. It supposedly is a tropical and not frost hardy, but I have overwintered it successfully. Last year in that Arctic blast, I did lose it and I had to, I had to repot it. So what I lost was in a pot, but do you know that across the street where I had planted one for a neighbor in the ground that hers, this supposed tropical plant, overwintered record low temperatures in the ground. It was minus 12 and her still overwintered and is still alive and performing well. And it's a wonderful plant for shade where you want an accent that's really tall and vertical. Let me go over here, Stuart. You can see that it's a vertical growth habit, which pretty soon will cover some of these electrical boxes and such. And obviously I need to get stronger or I need to get taller supports for it to climb. It's just really done beautifully and it's a great, great shade plant. So I highly recommend it. One other, a couple of other plants that have done really well in this environment up here, because it is shady even in the summertime, are some of, of the hookerellas that I like from Southern Living. And someone asked, do, do, does Southern Living just send me these plants or do I buy them myself? And I would say it's a combination of both. They send me new ones to try, and then when I get some that are really, really great performers, when I find them at my local nursery, I typically buy more of them. And this hookerella here is an example of that. I can't remember. I don't. This. I don't think this is buttered rum, um, but I love it. And look how pretty it still looks, and it's got kind of a. It creates kind of a flouncy skirt. <coughs> excuse me, around the base of this Utopia U, which is another great Southern Living plant. And I also love the way its foliage looks, its broad foliage looks against the delicacy of this Muhlenbeckia, which is another real favorite of mine, or wire vine plant. So these obviously aren't looking their best right now, but by next spring, they'll be fabulous, especially when I clean up all of these leaves. So you guys, let me know um, what, what your leaf cleanup protocol is, how you handle all of your leaves, and make sure to let us know what zone you're in because that really, it, it helps us all when we can read comments that are from somebody who is also in our zone. Thank you guys so much for all the Christmas cards and things that you've been sending. And I've got a lot to do. And as I said, it's gonna be kind of a chaotic day, so I better get busy. So from my house to yours, I hope that all of your holiday preparations are going really well. Well, it's been a very chaotic day today and it's gonna get more chaotic later on this afternoon. So I wanted to make sure that I got a workout in. So I'm still in my workout clothes. So my jacket is Patagonia. I got this in Tulsa a while ago. I love the fact that it has pockets and it's weatherproof and I don't know if it's windproof or not. Um, my little tiny earrings, I love these. These belong to my second mom and they're just little silver studded hoops. My britches are Zaia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I got these through my trainer and my shoes 
are vans. So, such as it is, that is my outfit du jour. <laughs>